About this time last year, I made a decision that I had been struggling with for quite some time. And a lot of you really disagreed with that decision. You thought it was going to be a bad idea. So today I thought I would talk about whether that was a good decision or a bad decision. And what I'm talking about is taking the coal forge out. The coal forge used to sit here, had the side draft hood over here, and it had been a fixture in this shop for quite some time. It was not here when I originally built this shop. When this shop was first built, I didn't have a chimney in here, so I just had a small gas forge. That forge has been gone for many years now. But that's all I had for quite some time in here, and I was perfectly happy with that. But I always thought, blacksmith shop ought to have a coal forge, and I think a lot of you probably agree with that on some level or another. But in the time that I have been blacksmithing, I have used a coal forge maybe 15 or 20 percent of my time, and that includes when I first started and only had a coal forge, and that was for several years. But most of the time, I've worked in a gas forge, and the coal forge was just kind of a special purpose tool when I needed certain things that wouldn't fit in the gas forge, certain forge welds or bending the middle of a scroll, something like that. So it's been nice to have a coal forge available, even though I didn't use it very much. Gas forge is what I use most of the time. Then I added the induction forge, and I really like the idea of the induction forge. I think it has a lot of potential. But previously, the gas forge and the induction forge had to share this spot where I'm standing, so they're kind of in front of the anvil, but the coal forge meant they weren't real useful. I could set a gas forge up on the coal forge, but it was often in the way, so I put the gas forge on a stand, and at that point, it just had to roll into here so I could work over here and I could reach. And it was pretty convenient, except for the blast from the gas forge made it kind of miserable to work at the anvil. But that also meant this was the best place for the induction forge. So you could only have one set up at a time, and I had to move them back and forth depending on what I was using, which if it was a small job, I didn't always put the induction forge in, even though it may have been ideally suited for that small job. With both of these moved back over here, they're both set up all the time, and I can pick and choose which one I want to use for the job at hand. In fact, sometimes if I'm working in the gas forge, but I need a real concentrated heat for a little upset or a very controlled bend, something like that, I'll just flip on the induction forge, use it for that, and then go back to the gas forge. This has been way more efficient, way more enjoyable this way, and I'm probably using the induction forge now, oh, probably 30% of the time, even in the winter when I like the gas forge for the heat, I'm still using the induction forge. It's just a little bit colder in the shop. But I suspect this summer I may use the induction forge for maybe 50% of my work because it is so nice and it is so convenient here. This has been a wonderful setup and a wonderful combination to have gas forge and induction forge side by side. I need to build a better heat shield to protect the electronics and the induction forge from the gas forge. But so far, it really doesn't get hot. This gas forge is so well insulated, it hasn't been a problem. And the gas forge is far enough back that if I'm working at the anvil, the blast and the heat is back here behind me, and it hasn't really been an issue. The other thing this does for me is give me the ability to just have a quick heat with the induction forge when I don't really need to light a forge for the day. Lighting the gas forge or taking the time to clean out the fire in a coal forge and build a fire, when you only need one or two heats is super inefficient. And with the induction forge plugged in and set up ready to go at a moment's notice, I can just use it for something like that. Now this is real time, this is how long it takes to get this hot. This probably isn't even the best coil for this job, it's just the one that happens to be on here. So you can see that is very quick, 
very efficient, and if you just need a heat occasionally because you're working on some small project, maybe I need a hook in the house or I'm working on some sort of a tool holder that's mostly fabricated but I want to bend a bar around something, this really makes that convenient. And even doing things like J-hooks, S-hooks, bottle openers, things like that, that are kind of little production runs, the induction forge has been way better. So I'm really glad to have it where I can use it more efficiently without having to disconnect the gas forge and roll it out and roll the induction forge in and do that sometimes several times a day. Now when I took the coal forge out of the main shop, I had no intention on getting rid of it at all. I always figured it would be stored over in this little building and if I needed it, I would drag it back out into the driveway and set it up out there when it was safe and reasonable to use it out there. And since I would only need it a few times a year, that wasn't really going to be a big deal. But you had made it pretty clear that you were really going to miss the coal forge and it was going to somehow affect your enjoyment watching the videos that I was doing over here on Black Bear Forge. So I decided to empty this building out, take all the other storage out of it, and turn it into a little blacksmith shop based around the coal forge and pretty simple tooling. There, of course, is the coal forge with the same hood that was on it in the other shop. This shop got a brand new chimney so that I didn't have to take the chimney off the other shop. I'll probably put a hood on that chimney so I can vent the heat from the gas forge in the summer so it's not as hot in there in the summer. But this shop is then set up in a very functional little shop. And this may be all the shop any of you would ever need or want. For me, I do want the bigger shop. I do have use for those tools and all that equipment over there. But this has been a nice, relaxing little shop to work in. There's, like I say, there's the coal forge. There's a little gas forge, and I actually use that quite a bit because I still work in gas more. But, it, but, but the coal forge is available over here. One of the viewers donated an anvil to this shop, so we got a nice anvil in this shop instead of using one of the little 66-pound anvils that we've been looking at. So this is a nice addition to the shop. I bought a swedge block, built a vice stand, there's a workbench, and I have a hand crank blower for the coal forge. Now after doing some videos over here and using the hand crank blower, I was very well reminded why I did not have a hand crank blower on the coal forge in the other shop, why I had an electric blower. Hand crank blower is a fair amount of work, and when you're doing video production work and you've got to take time away from the blower while you're trying to take a heat to move the camera, deal with microphones, lights, all that kind of stuff, you're losing heat, and it can be really hard to get up to good heat especially when you're doing something like this forge welded set of tongs that we made in a video a little while back. And I found that this took way longer when I couldn't step away just briefly to deal with something or to add coal to the fire because it's hard to add coal with one hand while you're cranking the blower with the other hand. And I really remember why I like an electric blower. Now I bought this electric blower from Blacksmith's Depot three or four years ago probably and I intended to use it as an upgrade for the coal forge when it was in the other shop. I just never got around to installing it. But I think I am going to put it on the coal forge in here and I'm going to go back to using an electric blower. It'll be a lot more efficient for me and I don't have to stand here and crank the blower. And when I start the fire first thing in the morning, that means I can go gather up my tools and materials and get things all set up while the blower is feeding the fire and getting it up to heat that first time. That's really the time when I prefer not to have a hand crank blower. Luckily I have a portable battery bank that I can use in this shop. I'm using it right now for the lights. I use it to charge the battery operated tools and it has plenty of power to run the blower on the coal forge. Probably don't have to carry it across to plug it in and charge it more than about once a month. So I think that's gonna work out fine. But that may be about the limit of power tools in this little shop, just because the space doesn't allow. There certainly isn't room to put a power hammer or a big hydraulic press or any of that kind of stuff in here. One other benefit that taking the coal forge out so that the gas forge and the induction forge can sit over here that I did not anticipate at the time was that gave me the space for the platen table. With a gas forge or an induction forge sitting right where I'm standing here, 
there would not have been room to bring this platen table into the shop and put it here. I either would have had to give up my big table or abandon the idea of having the platen table. So this is a side benefit that I didn't anticipate then, but really glad that I took that out so that I can have this in my shop. Now, am I suggesting that you take your coal forge out and replace it with a gas forge or an induction forge or both? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Your shop needs to be your space where you can do your best work the way you want to do it. Maybe you set up your shop based on aesthetics. You really like the look of cool old equipment. You've got an old coal forge that maybe was in the family. Maybe it was grandpa's old coal forge and his old anvil, even though it's all beat up. And that's what brings you joy as a blacksmith is to work with that equipment. By all means, that's what you should do. If you live in coal country and coal is the cheapest, most available fuel for you, that's a great reason to have a coal forge. It just didn't suit the way I worked. And since this is the space where I get to experience my own creativity and my own passion for the art and the craft of blacksmithing, I wanted it to suit the way I work. And the, and the coal forge just really isn't that most of the time. I like working in the propane forge. I like working with the induction forge. I like working under a power hammer and occasionally a hydraulic press. I like the fly press. I like having all the power tools. But I also like the quirkiness of the wood walls and some of the other stuff I have in this shop. So this shop reflects who I am as a blacksmith shop. Your shop should absolutely reflect who you are as a blacksmith. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's shop. It doesn't have to be set up like anybody else's shop. It's purely a personal decision. For everybody who made it this far, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video and watching it through to the end. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something. Have fun. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.